Hi, it's Polly here, uh, out in the glories of nature, um, with Mia Compadre. Hey, uh, Mimi. Yes, in uh, southern Thailand. Um, this is uh, jungly bits around Ao Mang. So, in the midst of all this glorious green splendor, uh, yes, my friends, I want to talk to you about the glories of cyber tanks. Ah, yes, cyber tanks. So, uh, I carry many different games as I wander around because uh, I get stuck at airports a lot and pocket games. Some of the old classic pocket games are my favourites. They're simple to convert to playing um, as a solo and pocket games always had brilliant bones because they had very little space to work with. So the game design had to be good and the idea had to really pop. So one of my favourites was by our old friend Steve Jackson, uh, Good Old Ogre, which is back in its tiny little pocket edition. Uh, when they brought out the super new amazing Deluxo version, uh, lots of people said, hey, I want the original pocket version. So they've done it. Um, so it comes in an envelope, it's got counters, yay, um, fold out map, everything you need. The map and the book, you can see they're very thin, it's quite small. So again, it is literally that uh, game style that was designed to fit into your school bag um, and they're brilliant games so Ogus had really good bones and has continued to be in play uh, and continued to be loved uh, kind of interesting in these days seeing the drone this and the drone that and the drone fighters like no oh, you know what you want you know what you want of course you do 500 yard long super tanks firing nukes at one another um, um, it is the way um, he knows so, Ogre. What is Ogre? Well, Ogre is um, set in the uh, near future. Uh, the original uh, uh, timeline, of course, is you know kind of laughable because it's got all sorts of amazing um, super tank events happening and World War III happening 12 years ago and all this kind of stuff. Um, when doing science fiction, never pick dates too close to home. But the idea is Titanic cyber tanks have been created. Uh, these are AI run and they're many 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 hundreds of meters long and they've got nukes and they've got anti-personnel batteries and they've got massive rail guns firing tactical nuclear shells and they are enormous and essentially indestructible there are conventional forces so there's tanks, infantry, uh, howitzers, aircraft um, and light tanks and missile tanks and GEVs, ground effect vehicles which are hover tanks which are incredibly fast, they're you know, fairly light but uh, spry and there's a command post. So in the very, very basic game, there is one player that takes an ogre. There are a few different marks in the basic game. There's like a mark three and a mark five. And the defender has a command post and a whole bunch of conventional forces that are defending it. The ogre must destroy the command post. The defender has to really stop that happening, thanks. And there are many, 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 many more scenarios in there where you can just start picking forces from points and just having at it. So the ogres are a platform that's essentially indestructible, but they move along on tread units. These tread units represent engines and tracks and so on that make them mobile. And they've also got weapon systems which have individual defense and can be picked off um, by conventional forces. So you can't blow up the ogre, but you can immobilize it or you can strip it of its offensive capabilities. So that is your game. You're going to try and keep it in play, and either play to slow it down and immobilize it, or polish its weapons off it so it's just like glowing like a billiard ball, or a combination of the two. There are some variations that you can do. You can get some, um, you can get mines and uh, things like this, and um, make the. Um, you can also get mobile command posts. Uh, you can get armored command posts. So you know, a few minor variations there. The GEVs get an extra move each turn, so it's a good old fashioned you go I go system where you move all of your units, do all your firing and then it's your opponent's turn hit us the same. Or she. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, but the GEVs get a second move after they've fired. So the classic tactic with them is race into your range, fire at a weapon on an ogre or whatever and then try and race out of the ogre's response range before it's his turn to fire um, and scatter out a bit so that you're not kind of 
in the direction he's going anyway, so he'll just like throw a few cannon shells in your general direction simply because, oh, what the hell, why not? Um, some of the ogre weapons are sort of one use, like ogre missiles, they have a massive attack, but they're one shot weapons, you can attack those. So, what, another tactic is to send a lot of light guys in to try and get rid of those one shot, very heavy weapons by sniping them off the ogre before the ogre finds something really worthwhile to fling those at. Um, so, good tactical choices. When you're picking forces, there are howitzers, which are like long range artillery. Uh, they're a bit expensive to choose because they can like fire from very long range. Terrain, relatively simple because this is a horrible atomic battlefield. There are craters, which nothing can enter. There are ridge lines, which only infantry and ogres can cross. And there's kind of broken terrain and so on. Uh, the ogre can ram troops because it's, it's enormous. So it can just run into conventional armor. And if that armor is... Um, immobilized or disordered it's just destroyed otherwise you roll a dice and see if it's destroyed if it runs over if an ogre runs over a command post it just flattens it if it runs into a hex where there's infantry it doesn't destroy the infantry but its anti-personnel batteries automatically reduce the strength of the infantry by one and the ogre can actually expend movement points bum, 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 just stay in the hex and keep on machine gunning them um, so look those simple tactical tools create a game that's enormously good fun, um, particularly when you get to scenarios where you can mix ogres and conventional troops and these sorts of things. Um, so you get screens of light vehicles, the giant ogres thundering in, and nukes going off left, right, and center. Yeah, do 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 do. Uh, it's a game that's had good bones. Uh, it's a game that spawned some spin-offs like GEV and so on, and. Um, it's it's a, it's well done and it survived. Now, there was a Kickstarter a while ago for a huge deluxe version of this game, <coughs> where the everything's big. The maps are big and glorious in colour, and the game components are what would you call them? Slot construction models made. Um, we you piece these things together, and they're beautiful. The ogres are like three or four inches long, more and um, so are all the tanks and things, these little 3D models, it looks great and it's kind of, a, a, it's a joy to play. Now there are of course miniatures for this and the miniatures are great, um, I love them, I love the Steve Jackson Ogres, uh, they look good, feel good, are good. Um, so look, a great game. It's very very simple to play this solo, um, effectively you run the Ogre solo and it will just constantly head towards the um, command post so you know most of the tactical decisions will be on the part of the person with the conventional forces um, and so you know a great game it's really good to see it back again um, in this format they kept the price like like 2.95 um, it's got everything you need it's got a little fold-up map it's got its counters um, you'll need to add a dice whoa if you're a gamer where will you find a dice um, and it makes a great convention pocket traveling companion, which was always its intention. So it's actually really nice to see a game that has survived being what it was intended to be back in about 1978. It still does that and it does it beautifully, but with its expansions and so on from GEV and later rules that were put out, it is an expanded game that you can enjoy in a bigger format with the miniatures and everything. So. It's going strong, um, glad to see it still there. Check it out and the pocket edition, three bucks, just get it. <laughs> just, just get it to have it around. Anyway, I've been your uh, roving reporter from um, all over Thailand. I'll be heading back home in a bit. I just took these games along with me to review for you people. Uh, so they had to be portable, um, they had to be solo playable, and they had to be, uh, they had to be good. Um, so this was my selection. So, anyway, if you like the videos, by all means, uh, subscribe, uh, find me on Patreon. Uh, you can find Ogre on the Steve Jackson uh, website. Just look it up. It's there. But, frankly, it's probably in every single game store. So, anyway, uh, from uh, Mr. Schnoots and myself in Thailand, it's farewell. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see you back on the other side of some long plane flights. Bye! <laughs> Unk.